A lot of what you do in Photoshop is creating selections, and so you can use those selections and turn them into paths, and you can even take a path and turn it into a selection. Let's take a closer look. Well, if I want to start with a real basic selection, for example, even a elliptical marquee, I could create this selection in here, and I go over to my Paths panel, in my Paths panel, I can use the options down below. Make sure I get the right one in here. And make path from selection. I'm going to click on that. And it's actually creating what's called a work path. And this is temporary. And it's going to disappear if I start making another path. And so, so if you want to make that work path permanent, you're going to have to save it or name it, really. And so if I double click, I can give it a name. You could call it path one or circle or whatever is helpful for you. And as soon as I name it, it's no longer italicized. And so this is a path that then can be stored with this file. If it's a Photoshop format or a TIFF format, there are some other formats as well that support paths then I can come back and access it. And I simply click on the path, and, it, and I can see it. And well, it's a little, it's kind of light gray color, but there it is. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, access another selection that I've made. And this one's a little bit um, better selection than just my circle. So I've gone ahead and I've selected that wheelbarrow. I'm going to go ahead and, and access the paths. Now, when I click on the paths button, it uh, creates that work path for me. Let's go back in here and make that selection again. And I go to Paths. I'm going to ignore this work path. Instead of clicking on the button, I'm going to go to the, the drop down here. When I click on the drop down, what I can do is actually choose to make selection. And it gives me a few extra options in simply clicking on the button. And oops, excuse me, that's not what I wanted to use. Let me try that one more time. I can choose Make Work Path. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to turn my selection into a work path. And it gives me a few other options. And I can change the tolerance. And the tolerance is going to determine how closely the path is going to match that selection. Keep in mind that your paths are going to be uh, curved in straight lines. They're not going to have feathering. And you want them to be smooth. So you want to make sure that this work path is optimal for your end results. If I go ahead and make this as small as possible, in fact, let's just put a zero in there and we'll see that the smallest possible one is a 0.5 and you can go up to 10. So we'll go to 0.5. And by doing that, what the path is going to do, it's going to create a more accurate, as accurate as possible to the selection. And it actually creates extra points. Let's go ahead and call this wheelbarrow 0.5. And we'll go back and reselect. We'll take a close, we'll come in here and make another work path. And instead of using the 0.5, let's go all the way to 10, because that's the maximum that we can use. And we'll call this wheelbarrow 10. We can only have one path selected at a time, but I can simply click on the path to select it. And the 10 is a lot smoother, but it's not as accurate. So the, the point is I want to make this much smoother. Now, if I'm going to turn this into a clipping path, perhaps, where I'm going to take this to a print source, I probably want something that's more accurate. It's going to give me more of a, a, a true representation. But if I'm trying to make something that's nice and clean and has fewer points and very smooth, then that's where I could use this tool and ultimately, I could take an existing path in here, and I could even turn it into a selection. So I have the option to click on it and make a selection, or go to that panel menu here and click on it and make selection, which I already did. Now, when you work with these paths, let's go ahead and deselect, Control-D, and then click somewhere else, because the, the way you deselect the path, you just click outside of it. When you work with the path, sometimes they're a little difficult to see with that gray background, especially depending on the color. And you can color the paths, per se, but you're actually changing the image itself. So the path, that selection, 
you don't change. But one of the tricks that you can do is you can simply put a color cast on your image. And I'm going to go ahead and up here to my, uh, there we go, color balance. And I'm just going to put a, well, that's not what I wanted. Let's try this one. Photo filter. Let's put a color balance on here and bump it up. And I, maybe if I change the color to a green, I can still see my imagery. But when I go back to my paths, sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to see those paths. So whatever helps, you can use. And the nice thing about using this image adjustment layer is it's not permanently changing your color. It's just helping you see that image. And I could even go ahead and open that up and maybe, maybe a bright pink or a, a bright blue would be helpful for that particular image. But boy, that, yeah, that red really makes that gray pop out more, makes it easier to see. And so that's another trick that I can use. Now again, if you're doing some selections that are more of a feathering selection, let's go ahead and make a circle again, just a real basic one, and we're going to add a feather effect to this. Oh, make sure I'm on the right layer here. And we're going to add a feather effect to that, refine the edge, and feather it. You can even smooth it out here, but it's already pretty smooth because of the circle. When I go ahead and make my path from that, make work path, and I'll go back to the default, which was two. There's no such thing as a feather, so that feather is going to be removed, and if I try to make a selection from that, I'm going to get a crisp line as opposed to a feathered line. In fact, if I go ahead and choose refine edge, it's back to that crisp line, so just keep that in mind. One other little note about these paths is that they don't really add much in the terms of size to your file, when you work with layer masks, you're actually creating um, a lot of extra information and it can make your files a lot bigger. In fact, if I were to go ahead and dump some of these masks and these layers, it can dramatically reduce the file size and you can see how it dumped that. But if you move into your paths and you start dumping your paths, they're a kilobyte or maybe even less than that and so you're not going to be changing the file size. So that's another advantage of using the paths if you want to quickly be able to get back to a stencil and have it as a, a way to load selections without having a lot of extra um, size or heft to your file. But what you can do is take a selection and turn it into a path or you can take a path and turn it into a selection so you'll be able to use both the raster and the vector elements in Photoshop.